Hi guys. Well, it was a dark, <coughs> rainy, nasty, depressing. <coughs> it's kind of why get out of bed <coughs> kind of day here in the collapse of everything, which would of course be it is now a Wednesday, <coughs> October second, <coughs> twenty twenty four. <coughs> so nice to be out of bed on this lovely day uh, so while thousands upon thousands if not millions of people in this country including my own brother and in uh, in Fort Myers and my niece in Asheville if she's still alive are dealing with whatever they're dealing with today uh, my entire life has been devoted to getting the brake light off of my truck. Uh, that that has become the central focus of your old chronicler of the collapse of everything's life, and I have to get back to that. So uh, let me get my daily chronicle of the collapse out of the way before I continue spending more and more of my life trying to get this motherfucking brake light off of the off of this fucking dashboard. Anyway, uh, I'm over here at medium.com going <coughs> through my usual Rolo decks of doom and gloom on medium.com and I was thinking that I was gonna make this one part of my ain't gonna happen roundup rant on Friday but one problem is my ain't gonna happen roundup rant is kind of already overflowing and it's only Wednesday and uh, you know <clears throat> part of you know usually my ain't gonna happen rant is talking about all of this hopium soaked apocalyptic unadulterated horse shit uh, how there's any solution to what is going on on uh, on, on this planet. Uh, but every once in a while, we get an honest breath of fresh air from one of the uh, one in, I don't know, 10 million people on the planet who understand how completely fucked we are. There's not a goddamn thing uh, that you or I or... Uh, Kamala Harris uh, are, are going to do about it. Uh, and one of those people is uh, Eric Michaels. And I read Eric's stuff <clears throat> fairly often. So uh, we're going to let Eric Michaels explain to us why we are so fucked and there's not a goddamn thing uh, that's going to turn this freight train around at this point. Take it away, Eric. <clears throat> a plea, a plea to scientists, teachers, influencers, and politicians everywhere. Good luck, Eric, with your pleas. Special note. Before I make my plea, I want to establish the fact that this idea is a version of my own personal hopium. I highly doubt any of this will make any difference with the possible exception to my readers, in including Sam Mitchell at Collapse Chronicles. This is called Preaching to the Choir which is what Eric Michaels and Eric Lee and uh, B and uh, uh, all the rest of them do with their lives. It is what I do with my life when I'm not trying to get a brake light off of my dashboard. Uh, I preach to the choir. But I guess we need more preachers on the planet. Uh, perhaps this plea will be passed on to others, providing the catalyst for them to begin their own personal journey exploring acceptance 
you know, acceptance on a cellular level that we are fucked and there's not a fucking thing we're going to do to change it. That is the acceptance he's talking about. Admittedly, <clears throat> this article probably is not for beginners, but then again, none of my articles are really designed for beginners. The material I discuss generally is not pleasant, even for experienced readers. Of course, here is a laugh for everyone, since it is so true. So instead of uh, ending with a laugh, he opens with a laugh by a woman named Hegel Borg. Quote, I have a mental illness that makes me think that people will change their minds if I present the correct arguments with the appropriate facts and data. I'm going to lock a Hegel. On to the plea. Okay. Here was Eric Michael's plea to, to uh, I, I don't know, I guess Sancho Panza. Please stop using the word problem to describe ecological overshoot and all of its symptom predicaments such as climate change. There is literally a huge difference between a problem with a solution and a predicament with an outcome. And there are mountains of empirical evidence pointing to the fact that overshoot, climate change, energy and resource decline, biodiversity loss, pollution loading, extinction, etc. are all predicaments for which there are no solutions. It ain't gonna happen. Non-acceptance of these facts is understandable but unacceptable as it fosters a cultural conditioning of ordinary people, ordinary people to believe that some sort of solution is right around the corner when in reality this could not be further from the truth. Technology use and innovation are precisely what have brought us to this point in time. These are behaviors of ours and they cause ecological overshoot. Continuing to promote the idea that there is some sort of solution which will fix any and or all of these predicaments only makes the existing predicaments worse as businesses and individuals promote technological ideas that only increase overshoot, not reduce it. By utilizing the words predicament or dilemma to describe these predicaments, you are honoring facts rather than falsehood. We are addicted to technology use, plain and simple. Certain kinds of technology will probably always be with us as long as we inhabit this planet. Things like fire, the wheel, and basic hand tools. Other types of technology will disappear as a result of energy and resource decline. A key symptom predicament of ecological overshoot producing the outcomes of collapse and die-off. You don't have to accept these facts. Addicts 
often deny their addiction for years. They try bargaining with it, but it does not change or go away. They try stopping for a while, but go back to the exact same behaviors as soon as they pick it back up again. The only way anything changes for the better is when they finally accept the actual reality, the truth. Only then does their life begin to change for the better. The same is true for those who deny that overshoot is a predicament with an outcome, not a problem with a solution. They try to bargain with the predicament, but nature does not negotiate. So, all of these attempts to solve what is seen as a problem go absolutely nowhere. Meanwhile, efforts to try to solve the predicament only end up increasing overshoot instead of reducing it. Increasing overshoot tends to increase all the symptom predicaments which are produced as a result of overshoot, which is why emissions continue rising, pollution loading continues increasing, ocean acidification increases, biodiversity loss increases, <coughs> extinction increases, global temperature increases, tree decline increases, cryosphere, meaning icy areas of the planet, cryosphere loss increases, and on, and on, and on. For those who are new to this, this is where we are going. My last article had a considerable amount to do with bargaining. So if you want to see where we have been recently with regard to that, check it out. Suffice it to say, literally millions of people, I would say billions of people, are using ignorance, hubris, and stupidity in an attempt to fight everything from drugs, the war on drugs, drugs are bad, drugs are bad, to climate change, to genocide, to social justice. They are all literally symptoms of overshoot. Not one of them can be reduced without reducing overshoot. More acceptance is also necessary to realize precisely where we are as a species. Most people, like 99.9% .9 of people, are unaware that civilization itself is unsustainable. Very few are aware that electricity generation is just a blip in time. I think some people down in North Carolina are becoming, uh, are becoming uh, more aware of that fact. Needless to say, if people are to actually accomplish any results, they must fight overshoot, not individual symptoms overshoot, you know, including climate change being the, the, the king of these recently, which will have no effect whatsoever as long as overshoot continues to increase, so too will symptom 
predicaments. Now, I don't want to depress anyone or make anyone feel bad. My intention is to share information, not make people feel bad. Still, for anyone expecting results on climate change, you can pretty much rule out any improvements during your lifetime. See denial of reality for details for that claim. The one exception here would be a nuclear winter, which might reduce climate change for a decade or two, but in this case, the solution would most likely be worse than the predicament. I am not an expert, nor have I ever claimed to be one. I have simply spent over the last 40 years studying climate change and more than the last decade studying overshoot because I have always wanted to understand them thoroughly. I do think I have a rather extensive amount of knowledge on both topics along with an impressive list of symptom predicaments which I am also quite familiar with. It is very important to me that people understand the reality of the situation and not get wrapped up in false beliefs and denial. I don't have any more answers than the next person, but I keep asking questions regularly and routinely because I want to know why all of this is happening and what the best course of action is. I also keep my mind open looking for anything that might be useful to help reduce the level of harm the predicaments we face will cause. Sometimes conditions change and new realities develop as a result. Yes, right. <clears throat> Our communities and societies need the facts surrounding the predicaments we face. Claiming that they are problems gives people a false sense of security that just is not warranted. Discovering what makes humans happy and why we lack agency is important. Comprehending these without resorting to optimism bias is sometimes difficult for people should uh, I think we should change that to impossible <clears throat> for 99.9% .9 of people <coughs> who often go into reductionism, which does not work in the wider frame of reference. See why solutions are really just bargaining. I wanted to keep this article short and sweet, so to speak. I hope I have accomplished that task. Overall, I want to encourage people to live now. There you go. And then he has a few more closing quotes, which I won't... Uh, Get involved in because I have got to get moving on this dreary day in the collapse of everything to uh, continue my fruitless, hopeless pursuit of getting rid of this fucking brake light on, uh, 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 on my dashboard. Uh, I have uh, how many more solutions? 
to the predicament of this motherfucking brake light. Uh, do I have to eliminate uh, before just yanking the fucking brake bulb, uh, brake light bulb out of my goddamn dashboard and hoping the, uh, the vehicle inspector uh, isn't on to my little game. Yeah, right. Get out there and enjoy uh, turning off the red brake light <laughs> while wow, you still can. The brake, the bright red brake warning light is on. Good luck turning that one off. My guys.